I'm Mitch with Mosaic Manufacturing. And I'm Jason with 3D Printing Canada. Right now we're on site at Mosaic, really excited to announce some new products and some new functionality. And we're gonna share some secrets with you, a little trick to help you deal with the issues around soluble supports. So for those of you who might not know, I'm a new Palette 2 Pro user, and the Palette 2 Pro allows me to do four color materials on any of my standard printers that I have. I can do more than four if I'm a little bit handy. And I understand you've kind of taken that to the next level. Yeah, we have. So there are now thousands of palettes in the world. Um, it's been on the market for over a year now. We've taken all the feedback and all the improvements and we've clumped them together into the new model of Palette 2 and Palette 2 Pro. It's the S model. It's the most refined palette. It's the fastest palette we've ever made, the most reliable palette. Um, How much faster than the Palette 2 Pro can it get? So the Palette 2 Pro got 10% faster than it already was. Um, it was already 20% faster than the Palette 2. So actually both of them got 10% faster. Right on. And then I understand there's a new Canvas Hub. Yes, so speaking of speed improvements, the Canvas Hub got way faster. Uh, we moved up from a Raspberry Pi Zero all the way to a full Raspberry Pi 3 compute module. So you've got all the power in there to do things like use a webcam um, and get full speed printing. So um, really excited to talk about that and we can dive in a little bit more nice. as well. And I mean, I just bought the Palette 2 Pro and there's already something new and I, I kind of hate that, but is there a, a nice way for me to kind of upgrade my unit to make it faster? Absolutely. So that's something that we wanted to take into account. You know, there's of course going to be people who bought it recently, people who are going to want to upgrade, but you shouldn't have to buy a new product. Right. So we made the upgrade kit. So if you have a Palette 2 Pro, there's the Palette 2 Pro S upgrade kit, and then there's the S upgrade kit for the Palette 2 as well. Okay. Um, we can walk through that. Shouldn't take more than a half hour. Um, and really, so with your Palette 2 Pro, once you do the S upgrade, you're going to be getting 99% to the, you know, the product someone would have if they bought a brand new one. Right on. So uh, let's dive into what's included in the upgrade kit. Sounds good. Okay. Okay, so here we have the Palette 2 S Pro upgrade kit. So we have your Palette 2 here, mm -hmm. and we can go through and uh, do all the upgrades. Okay, so let's just run through the parts that are included with this. Absolutely, okay. So starting with the most important, we have the all new Splice Core S Pro. So that's the part that actually gets us that extra speed improvement. You got it, yeah. So still um, aircraft grade aluminum, um, helps with cooling, it's incredibly optimized. We have a new red tab in the front as well, easily distinguishes it. Okay. Um, and so that is what's giving you that performance improvement there. Uh, with that, we have uh, four new uh, splice tubes mm -hmm. that are compatible with that core. So they are different splice tubes than the previous ones? Yes, okay. exactly. In so they'll come with the ones that are compatible, exactly. Yep. Um, next up, we have new drive arms. So the drive arms are now um, almost clear. So that means that you have a little bit more transparency into seeing the filament in that path. Right. They also offer better constraint to the filament, which is better for um, sort of better precision control of driving the filament, especially with softer materials. Yeah, any flexibles, you need to have a really constrained filament path. Exactly, flexibles like TPU or even some soluble supports are a little bit um, more stringy. And PVA that. is kind of mushy, I hate that You got that it, stuff. exactly. <laughs> so you've got the full arm here, all, six of, uh, all five of them, the four ingoing and the outgoing with the bearing and the spring. Um, so you can pop those on. Um, all new thumb screws. So some people had challenges where they would wear out over time. So these are improved. Um, these are now uh, hardened steel and they are longer, so you should be good to go with them. Okay. Minor improvement, but if it saves you that frustration of having a sure. thumb screw wear, it's totally worth sure, it. Sure, it's just a quality of life improvement. Kind exactly, of yeah. yeah. So again, bringing everyone up to the S. Okay. Um, we have um, homing switches, uh, which are the S version. The LED color is different. They're mostly the same, but again, making sure that everyone can fully come up to the S. Um, two more of those, which can also act as spares if you need them. Similar with the homing switches, uh, all six of these, the one for the Pong and the, the four for the ingoing, as well as the extras, uh, fully upgraded to the S. A screwdriver for assembly to make that as simple as possible. Your mosaic stickers. That's important. Yes. <laughs> and then the firmware couldn't come in the box, sure. um, but you'll upgrade to the, the S uh, functionality um, through our firmware uploader. Great. So Mitch, I'm just gonna quickly go over and make sure I'm understanding what I need to do. I've got my Palette 2 Pro here. If I pop off the lid, I've obviously got a new splice cord I'm gonna install right here. These acrylic panels come off with these thumb screws. Under the acrylic panel, I'm gonna have uh, lever arms, so one, two, three, four, five, and I'm gonna have those switches, which are here 
here, and then one, two, three, four, swapping those out, and I'll suddenly have a Palette 2 S Pro. So that was actually a pretty simple upgrade. I mean, I've done hot end swaps and stuff like that. This is way easier than any of that. And now I have 99% of a Palette 2 S Pro. That other 1% is kind of the faceplate here. My faceplate still says Palette 2, and it's the Pro because it's black. Um, so slight variance from the Palette 2 S, but I really don't care about what it says on the faceplate. I know that the insides are really what matters. Yes, and it right. knows. On the screen, it'll, it'll remind you that it is an S Pro. Right, it is a different firmware entirely, exactly. right? Yeah. So that was a pretty easy upgrade, to be honest. Um, a lot of quality of life improvements and some minor tweaks, and obviously that speed improvement, which is the biggest change. Um, it's not a completely new product. It's no. improvements to your existing amazing product. The Canvas Hub, however, is completely different, right? That is, yes, the Canvas Hub really is quite different in, in what it can do in the specs and all that. Um, maybe before jumping into what's different, let's talk about what a Canvas Hub is. That's a because, great point. <laughs> yeah, I think you've been printing with a Palette 2 Pro, but you haven't been using a Canvas Hub. Right, I have a Canvas Hub, but I've just been using my Palette 2 Pro in standalone mode. Exactly, yes. So there are two modes that you can use Palette in. One we call standalone or accessory mode. Um, that's when you don't plug your Palette at all into your printer. Um, they effectively run independently, and a lot of the prints that we've shown or that you can see were actually printed like that. Okay. But there are a few drawbacks to that experience, like having to put files on two SD cards, not having any form of monitoring or anything like that. Mm -hmm. um, so with Canvas Hub, it's really the connection between your printer and your palette, um, as well as Octoprint or, or a slicer like Canvas. So you can slice up your file, send it directly to the hub, which then goes to both, no more SD cards. That leads to more reliable printing. You get some cool functionality that can actually let you print pretty substantially faster in color. Um, and what's new with the Canvas Hub S, because it's now using a Raspberry Pi 3 Plus compute module, it's got all the power. So you can actually plug in a webcam, you can monitor your prints, record octolapses, remotely monitor, which can be really useful. You know when you're running a print and you don't know if you need to go back to check it, now you can actually have enough power on this to not only do all the palette control, but watch a webcam. That's fantastic. Yeah, I'm, I'm not a huge fan of, of SD cards, and I know, you know, having one kind of unified workspace or workflow is really important and really increases my productivity. Absolutely. So, I already have a bunch of Raspberry Pi 3s um, and a 4 sitting in a drawer uh, at home. Um, some of them are in use. Can I roll my own instead of buying the Canvas Hub? Absolutely. In fact, we recommend that. If you have a Raspberry Pi, uh, we provide the plugins. So if you set up an instance of Octo print on that Raspberry Pi, you'll plug in the Canvas and Palette 2 plugins and you're good to go. Really the Canvas Hub and the Canvas Hub S are for people who want an out of the box experience, don't need to set anything up ready to go. Right, plug um, and play. And plug and play, the exactly. Races. Yeah, okay. that's who this is for. So Mitch, I think you've convinced me. I'm gonna finally set up my Canvas Hub. Uh, at the very least, I can reuse my Raspberry Pis and set up a Canvas Hub on that with Octoprint. Uh, I understand that the palette can help me with another problem as well, specifically as it pertains to support materials. Yes. Yeah, so, you know, multicolor is great, and you can really enhance the quality of your prints, but not every print is flat on the bottom. Right, like, right? like this guy. He ends up yes. with a, a rough surface. This guy is PLA, yeah. and it ended up bonding quite well to the support structure underneath, being a completely curved surface, and we end up with this kind of jarring mess, right? Yeah. Um, but I see something over here that looks a lot cleaner, and this is a crazy complex shape. <laughs> it's like impossible shape, to print you this know, thing. Like, uh, compared to the whale here. So how, how, what's the trick? How do you yeah, do this? Yeah, so this is a, a model that doesn't have a flat bottom. You need to use some type of support. Traditionally, um, the solution would be water-soluble support. Sure. And in theory, that's the coolest thing ever, right? <laughs> you print with a second material. So maybe in Palette, for example, you'd have three PLAs and one water-soluble. You print your part, you put it in water, it goes away. Sure. Sounds great. It's messy. It's messy. And you've got to print slow. Like if you're using PVA, I, all that speed I just talked about, it's gone because I need to go slow to make that succeed. Yeah. Right? So what if I told you that we used a different material, not water-soluble, something that was about the same price as PLA, almost just as easy to print as PLA, and we got this quality of surface finish. Lies. Not lies. <laughs> so it's a pretty cool trick that um, we've been using for a while at Mosaic. We'll use PETG as a breakaway support because PETG works well with palette with PLA, prints well with palette with PLA, but it doesn't stick to PLA well enough after the print. So we took this off the printer, we simply peeled away the PETG, and we're left with these surfaces which were really nice and clean. So it's the benefits of water soluble, but it's not five times the price like water soluble is. Sure. There's no gooey mess of water, and you end up with the same results much more quickly. Yeah, and the temperature range is also very close to PLA if you're mixing the two. Right. Right, that's yeah. awesome. 
So the palette is not just multicolor. We're now talking about multi-materials. Yep. Is there any limit to the materials that I can mix? Yeah, there are definitely limits. Um, although the really exciting combinations, we've put a lot of effort into making work. So let's talk about what some of those are. The base that we always talk about is multicolor. So if it's different colors of PLA together, works really well. Right. Um, different colors of even different materials like TPU. TPU is generally a bit more of a challenging material to work with, sure. especially with the new S upgrades. Um, you can be doing multicolor of TPU. And then PTG, ABS, any of those rigid materials. Okay. When we start moving into the combinations of material, one of my absolute favorite is this, like we just talked about, PLA with PETG as a breakaway. Um, there are some models though where breakaway is not right for you. Yeah. It's rare, like this crazy this <laughs> hexagon and a hexagon and a hexagon with a bowl in the middle of it. That one you need water soluble. 100%, there's no way you're gonna pick any, even if it is PLA on PETG, as well as that works, you're not gonna spend the time to pick it all out of here without breaking something in the yes. process, right? So challenging internal cavities that are too small. It's rare, but in that case, it's worth paying a lot more and dealing with the frustration of, of uh, water soluble support, keeping sure. it dry, all that stuff. Sure. So that's there. Um, that works really nicely with PLA. Um, and then there are some other soluble support materials like HIPS, right. which has a bit of a higher temperature band, so that can work better with something like ABS because the temperature band of extrusion is similar. You asked about limitations. That is one. You want to make sure that you're using materials which have a similar temperature at extrusion within right. about 10 or 20 degrees. So for example, PLA with um, PVA, we can match them at a reasonable temperature to print nicely together. Okay, and that reasonable temperature, are you kind of splitting the difference between the two and finding a co common medium between them? Yeah, so personally, I always like to find that happy medium, usually airing on the hotter side. Right. In Canvas and a lot of other slicers, you can actually set a different temperature. So when it goes over to a transition tower, for example, it can go from 220 up to 225, but I like to just use that one temperature and it works pretty well. Sure, so. and if that temperature gradient was maybe too high, there might not be enough time during, say, the purge tower for it to change the temperature. Exactly. Right. Okay, yes. that makes sense. All right, Mitch, we covered a lot of ground here yeah. tonight. Um, and I have a whole other pile of things to play with on my Palette Pro. I need to experiment more with multi-materials, specifically for those difficult support situations, you know, for example, the whale. And the other thing I really like is that you've made improvements to the palette through the constrained filament path, for example, that will make my life printing multiple TPU prints like this a little bit easier and a little bit more reliable, yes. right? So that's kind of the theme here, is I see a lot of, a lot of ease, ease of use and a lot of reliability improvements, right? Um, I really appreciate you sharing all of this with me tonight um, and with all of our viewers here. Remember guys, like and subscribe, leave a comment down below, a question for me or maybe Mitch, and we'll do our best to answer them. And as always, thanks for watching. Thanks.